Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on Introduction to Acids and Bases. Now this video is primarily aimed at those who are doing A2 or second year chemistry, uh, although there is some bits in here which might be useful for AS chemistry as well or the first year of chemistry. Uh, so in this video we're going to look at um, some basic reactions to do with acids and bases and how they actually perform and we're going to look at uh, what we mean when we say a strong acid and base and a weak acid and base as well and as usual we're going to go through a few examples as well. Okay so let's start and look at the two chaps who came up with the uh, theory that we know and use most often which is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Uh, and these two chaps, these two scientists, uh, came up with uh, an explanation as to uh, how an acid and a base behaves. So um, an acid is a proton donor, so it would give up protons, and a base is a proton acceptor. And we're going to use this principle as well to go through uh, and explain how acids and bases work. Now there is another principle as well called the Lewis acid and base theory, uh, but this is mainly linked with um, the explanations of transition metal complexes and how they're acidic. So uh, that's a different theory altogether, but we're just going to stick with the Bronsted-Lowry theory for the time being. Okay, so an acid. An acid, according to Bronsted-Lowry, is a proton donor. So we've got a uh, equation here, a generic equation, to show how an acid would work. And we've used HA to represent the acid. Now acids will react uh, with water uh, and they would form an acidic solution. Uh, and so I'm going to show you how this is actually made. So you can see we've got H2O liquid and all acids are aqueous, uh, they have to be dissolved in solution. So um, HA is aqueous in this case. Uh, and so what we do is effectively, uh, this is our acid, it is a proton donor, as we've established over there. So it gives a proton to the H2O. And so what we form is H2, uh, H3O, shall I say, H3O plus aqueous uh, plus and then we've got our A minus, and that's also going to be aqueous as well. Now, this is just a the official uh, form of which acids exist as. So acids will produce H3O plus ions. Um, in reality, though, um, this is obviously true, but when we're writing out equations, it's sometimes a lot easier just to write H plus. So when you write H plus in equations, actually all you're doing is you're shortening uh, this, the H3O plus ion there, but actually that's what happens in reality. Okay, so there you go, you can see how the uh, acid has donated a proton. Bases, uh, we can represent using the letter B, and you might see that quite often as well. Uh, again, just like acids, bases are aqueous, they're dissolved in solution. Uh, we're going to react that with water, but as you can see, uh, a base, according to Branch Lowry, is a proton acceptor, so this base is going to accept a proton, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put BH plus aqueous, so it's always aqueous, uh, and then what we're going to leave behind is OH minus. Now what makes bases uh, what makes bases a base is they produce OH minus ions, and you can see here uh, that this base you can see clearly has produced the OH minus ion, uh, and it's done that by using the water molecule that surrounds uh, to produce OH minus, so you can see it's very similar uh, to an acid as well. Okay, so we're going to go through some very specific examples here and um, just that you need to know really. They're quite straightforward relatively. So uh, for example, an acid and a carbonate reacting together. Uh, acid plus carbonate will always produce a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. So that's a basic thing that you need to remember. So we're going to go through a very specific example here with your state symbols as well, which are obviously important. So uh, let's go for hydrochloric acid and this is obviously aqueous we're dealing with acids and um, we're going to react it with calcium carbonate uh, and we're going to say this is calcium carbonate solution so this is also aqueous as well uh, now the salt formed is the metal plus the uh, non-metal on the acid so this is calcium chloride CaCl2 calcium's in group two so we need two chlorines to react with it um, and this is aqueous this is obviously all the solution uh, we're going to produce carbon dioxide as well which is a gas uh, plus water, which is a liquid. And bingo, there we go. Uh, obviously, we need to get this thing balanced as well. Um, so very simple, stick the two in front of there, and that makes sure that we've got the right number of chlorines there as well. So uh, make sure you include state symbols as well. All acids must be uh, aqueous at the very least, so you've got to make sure that's correct. Um, 
Next one, acid and methyl. So uh, acid plus methyl gives salt plus hydrogen gas. Um, so again, we're going to go through a specific example. We'll use HCl again, I think. Um, so HCl, uh, and we're going to react it with, let's say, sodium metal. Sodium is that really soft metal. Uh, you put it in water, it blows up and it catches fire and everything. So well, it blows up, it you know, fizzes and spins around on the top. Um, and hydrochloric acid is uh, aqueous because it's dissolved in solution. Uh, right, and we're going to react these together. So again, sodium chloride is formed. There's our salt. So the metal and the non-metal. Sodium chloride. Uh, and that's aqueous, dissolved in solution. Uh, and that's going to form hydrogen gas as well. Uh, again, we need to balance this. We've so got two hydrogens on this side, so we need to stick a two in front of there. We've got two chlorines here, only one there, so we need to put two in front of there. And now we've got two sodiums, we need to stick a two in front of there. So two's all on. So um, this is our reaction that shows the reaction with an acid and a metal. Uh, now, in terms of the chemical tests for these, um, the exam board might be a bit cryptic about what they're after. Uh, these things obviously produce hydrogen. A test for hydrogen is if you put a lighted splint near it, it will produce that squeaky pop, very distinct um, uh, sound that you would get with hydrogen. Uh, and also, I suppose, with carbonates, um, to test for carbonate, you just add an acid. If you get fizzing, then uh, that could be a sign of a carbonate. And also, to double check, um, is that if you put lime water uh, and you bubble the products of this through lime water, if carbon dioxide is present, lime water will go cloudy. Um, so there's another test to prove that you may have a carbonate uh, that's actually reacting. So um, make sure you know them chemical tests as well. Again, they'll be very cryptic in the exam, so make sure it's in, your, in the back of your mind. It's just a standard test. Okay, and um, the final things that I want to go through is basically just uh, the basic reactions to do with acids, weak, strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, and weak bases as well. So uh, examples of strong acids are things like hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and phosphoric acid, H3PO4, also known as mineral acids. Um, so they, for whatever reason, so um, you don't really need to know the reason for them, but they are actually called mineral acids. Uh, and the reactions of them are um, quite straightforward. Um, so we're going to write them up here. So this is going to be, so what we'll do is we'll write it in blue. Just make it stand out a little bit. So we're going to pick hydrochloric acid. Uh, let's put that as aqueous, because all acids are aqueous. Now, what happens is these actually dissociate fully and they produce H plus ions, which is aqueous. Uh, and they also produce, in this case, they're going to produce chloride ions. So depending on what the acid is, you might, if it's sulfuric acid, you'd produce H plus ions, plus sulfate ions, which is SO4, two minus ions. And if it's phosphate ions, it's PO4, three minus. So uh, make sure that they all balance. But effectively what we're showing here is that equilibrium lies well over to the right hand side. Strong acids dissociate fully, nearly, just about. Um, and so that we assume that it dissociate fully. So you have incredibly small amounts, if anything, of the HCl. Um, and we have very large amounts of these two. So that's what makes them uh, strong acids because they produce a lot of H plus ions per mole of acid molecule that we have at the start. Uh, the next one is uh, weak acids. So weak acids are carboxylic acids. Um, so for example, I've got on there is ethanoic acid at the end, which is the uh, one of the ingredients in vinegar. Uh, so it doesn't smell very nice, but you might have eaten it before. Not concentrated, but diluted down, obviously. Uh, weak acids, carboxylic acids, now these are uh, weak because they don't dissociate fully, unlike strong acids. So let's put our example on there. So CH3, COOH, aqueous equilibrium arrow. Uh, and this is going to produce, in this case, ethanoate ions, which are CH3, COO minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous. Okay, so these reactions here um, show a weak acid uh, weakly dissociates. Okay, uh, the next one is a strong base. Uh, now, I just want to, at this point, I suppose, explain the difference between a base and an alkali. Uh, basically, an alkali is a soluble base. So um, if we take a base and it will dissolve in water, and all bases will, but if it dissolves in water, we form an alkali. So um, just a little bit of extra knowledge there, because a lot of people get the two words mixed up and they think they're actually the same and they're not. Um, 
but a strong base is basically anything that will um, dissociate fully, a bit like a strong acid. Um, but remember, a base is going to be something that's going to produce OH minus ions. So um, we're going to use an example, which is sodium hydroxide. And again, just like acids, uh, it's dissolved in water. So we're going to put aqueous, which is on there. And this is going to dissolve quite readily and form Na plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. Okay, so you can see it fully dissociates, equilibrium lies well over to the right. In this case, we produce loads of OH minus ions, so therefore very, very basic. Uh, and the last one is a weak base. Now, weak bases are unusual uh, because actually you can see ammonia is an example of a weak base. Uh, ammonia is um, doesn't have any OH minuses of its own, as you can notice. So what it has to do is it relies on water that it's dissolved in uh, to actually act as a base. So we're going to write the equation showing that because it just makes it a little bit easier to, to illustrate. So we're going to put NH3. This is aqueous. Uh, and we're going to react that with water, which is liquid. Right, and what happens is the um, NH3 actually, uh, one of the protons here, the water acts as, a, as an acid. It donates a proton to the NH3, and that makes it become NH4+, plus or ammonium ion. So we're going to write that over here. Uh, and then what's left behind is OH minus ions, and that is what you need to make it a base. So we'll put OH minus there. Hey, Chris. Okay, so this, because it's a weak base, um, it doesn't dissociate fully. And so therefore equilibrium, uh, we just put the equilibrium arrow in there. Equilibrium actually lies well over to the left. Uh, we don't produce as much OH minus ions, um, and so therefore it's classed as a weak base. So this is um, the basic introduction to acids and bases. Make sure you can uh, write down your equations, you know your examples, your tests for them, and you know examples of strong uh, acids and bases and weak acids and bases, and you can write equations in particular, in particular for this one, which is a little bit unusual. That's it. Bye-bye.